Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today it's another causal reality off the cuff episode. It's causal reality number two. And I like this because, like, with these episodes, I like, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to say, which is interesting because, like, um, that really is the causal will perspective. Before we say whatever we're going to say, the ultimate reality is we don't know. But this is like, you know, I don't even have a plan for this. So, so let's see. And, and the reason I'm doing this is because, like, we're moving from understanding that free will is um, an illusion, that our wills are unconscious or causal, to what does this mean? What does this mean? And to be honest, um, you know, I, I've thought about it to an extent. You know, I just did an episode on, on implications, but, um, but there's a lot more to cover. Um, so, all right. All right, yeah. I want to... I want to actually promote. Um, I want to promote my role in this actually because, see, I don't have an advertising budget. I mean, if I was like a network, um, you know, a network, okay, <laughs> a television network, I'd pour a few million dollars into an advertising campaign um, about the show. But also, I want here. This is cool because, like, I want to show how you kind of like present something as you're having done it, but you don't take credit for it. You understand that it's not up to you. It's like just, um, it's, what, it's what the universe has fated you to do. So, with this thing, with this promotion, this show, um, this, um, this effort, this initiative to, to awaken the world to the reality that free will is an illusion. Um, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much the only person doing this um, to, the, to, the, um, to the public in general. I mean, you'll, you'll have some classes on this in college, you'll have some college professors, uh, philosophers, and some psychologists writing on this, but generally, well, two things. One, a lot of these philosophers and psychologists just get it wrong. Not so much psychologists, but the philosophers. I mean, like, you know, a lot of philosophers believe the, the, um, the curious, you know, insane, actually, notion that you can both have a free will and not. You know, it's just completely logical. But, um, but their, their work is generally limited to the uh, academic journals, um, books they write that nobody reads but them. So, you know, so like basically, yeah, um, between, and well, actually, <laughs> I'm not going to be the only one doing this soon because like, you know, we are um, preparing um, a new show. I better not talk about it yet. Uh, but anyway, I'm, you know, I've been the only one doing this for a while. I'm bringing some other people into it. Um, that, that uh, like for example, a friend of mine um, wanted to do a TV show on it. You know, he got it, and then you know he was, he's a member of my meetup, and so we talked about it, and I inspired him, and so you know he's actually doing a show in Manhattan um, on this now called The Myth of Free Will, which is very cool, and I'm co-hosting with him. Um, anyway, so. The idea is, um, yeah, I'm the only one doing this. Um, now, what, how do you, how do you kind of like, because like when, when Einstein, for example, discovered, um, came up with um, the relativity, general and, and special, you know, it's kind of like he was discovering a truth and he presented it to, to people so that un they understand it. You know, there, there was a certain kind of conception of reality before he did this. And then he presented his ideas for this, and the world, you know, changed. We now understand um, his his the reality he discovered. So now, with this, I'm not, you know, I'm not discovering this, um, but I certainly am the agent that that fate is using to um, to get the word out. And, and you know, I'm good at this actually. With, with my happiness show, before I did the happiness show, there really wasn't a happiness movement. 
you know, um, a couple of years into it, Happiness was on the cover of, of Time magazine. So, um, so yeah, I would expect that, that you know, that this show, it is, this show is already having this res, the same results, as a matter of fact. Um, the April 16th through 22nd issue of New Scientist magazine had on its cover um, Free Will, the Illusion We Can't Live Without, um, meaning that it basically accepts the fact that free will is an illusion and it's basically, you know, trying to address the, the idea, well, fine, it's illusion, but maybe it's, a, um, maybe it's beneficial. Now, I, I'm going to do more shows on why it's actually probably a lot more detrimental than beneficial, partly because, like, I believe in the, um, in the benefit of truth. I mean, you know, a causal will is a true perspective. It's, you know, free will is an illusion. I, I, I don't think that um, ultimately it's, it's more beneficial to believe in an illusion than to believe in the truth. But, all right, what am I trying to say? So, like, um, so, yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, pioneering this new human consciousness. And, you know, can't say if it's going to happen or not because, like, we can't predict. That's the thing, you know. Um, and that, that, you know, we can't predict not because we don't, um, not because our wills are not causal and because reality is not causal. We can't predict because we just don't have the data. Well, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But chances are... Um, the planet will come to understand the causal nature of human will, and this is very, very cool. So, like, so, I mean, so then, here's the thing, okay, arrogance, I, I, I hate arrogance, I really, I, I don't like arrogance in people, I don't like some people, you know, thinking that they're better than others, I don't like it when I think that, you know, arrogance to me is like, all right, well, you know, it's, all right, in a certain sense, because I've gone from the free will to the call of the will perspective to a great extent, because I'm still working on it, you can't change that, you know, automatically overnight. It, it takes time. But to the extent that I um, that I attribute a cause of will to others, to myself, it's not like I don't. I'm not going to blame other people for being arrogant. I'm not going to blame myself per se, to the extent I might sometimes be. But um, but it's still a loathsome kind of, um, you know, manner, um, attribute, just feeling. So, so like, you know, here I am, like, I'm like, I'm pioneering this brand new consciousness, you know. And again, this is bigger than Einstein. This is bigger than Darwin, than Copernicus, than Galileo or Newton. This is, this is like huge. And <laughs> the great irony, and this is pretty cool. I cannot take credit for this. No way. I, you know, this is not up to me. What I'm doing, this show, you know, what, the, the shows I've done, I cannot take credit for it. Logically, rationally, that's what the, this whole show is about. And so, the wonderful thing about this perspective is it allows you to do something really, really great. I mean, amazingly great. And, um, and not suffer the arrogance you know, and main, maintain humility. Um, and that's a godsend, because a, a lot of times with, with arrogance, um, it separates you from people, you know. People who, most people don't like arrogance, you know. People sometimes, like, are deceived by it. Sometimes a person will act as if they're better than others, and other people will buy into it, unfortunately. But, but generally, you know, arrogance is something that we... Um, that we don't um, like. So that, that's what's so cool about like understanding this perspective. You can do something really great and st maintain your humility and maintain your kind of like interaction with others in a certain sense. Um, all right, what else? Um, okay. Oh, I had a... Um, where am I? I, ha <coughs> I had a... Um, I was meditating a couple of days ago, and I had a great insight. Something I knew before, but it kind of like, it really just, you know, it came to the forefront. Um, it's the idea that um, we have no idea where our thoughts come from. We, ha we just, we, I mean, like, they come from our mind, we think, from our brain, whatever. That's, you know, 
they, they come from our brain. We can touch our brain with an electrode and create like an image, create a, you know, and um, activate a memory, whatever. There's, there are various, you know, ways of understanding physically, you know, where our thoughts come from. But like, aside from that, we just don't know. And let me try to explain this. And this will give you kind of like an understanding of why free will is impossible, or why we just simply don't have it. <laughs> um, you can't do this now because you're watching the show, but after the show, count to 100, count to 50. <laughs> and um, when you get to 50, take note of the, um, the thought, the next thought that comes to your mind, okay? Now, I can pretty much promise you that, um, you know, you might come up with a reason why you might have thought it, you know, like, um, let's say you decided um, your thought was, wow, I'm hungry. I got to, you know, get something to eat. Um, and then the reason for that was, well, you're hungry. But, but that thought, okay, you know, at that specific moment in time, after you counted to 100, um, sure, you were hungry, but um, there is a lot more going on in your mind. Um, you know, you could have thought anything. And, um, and so this thought just comes into your mind, and like, that's the thing, where does it come from? It just arises. And naturally, I mean, I've done shows on this, it, it, it arises from the unconscious, because that's where all our thoughts arise. But we don't, you know, because we don't have access in real time to the unconscious, because the unconscious, by definition, is something we're not even aware of, then obviously that thought that we're hungry, whatever thought we have, is coming from somewhere that, that is not really um, what we consider us in a certain sense, you know, in the sense of like us of like, you know, we control whatever we do. Um, so, yeah, so, that, and that's like, all right, and let's say you do come up with a reason. I'm just tangenting a bit with the, with the hunger thing. Like, so if, if you come up with, with the reason that, like, or you, you thought of, you know, getting something to eat because you were hungry, excuse me, then, um, then that, that hunger would be the, uh, the causal reason for, your, for that thought, not, not your free will. It was like, you know, it's a biological process. The, the, the body, the unconscious, tells you when you're hungry. That it tells you with a thought, hey, I'm hungry. Hey, I want to eat some. I, I ate before. I'm not hungry. <laughs> but, um, all right, what else? What else? Um, yeah, that, that, the key now, all right. When we're hedonic creatures, that means we seek pleasure, we avoid pain. And to the extent that we are faced with a belief about ourselves, about the world, about other people, that, that, doesn't, um, that creates more pain than pleasure, at least immediately, perhaps not in the long term, but you know, in the immediate, then we're likely to kind of like dismiss or reject that thought. You know, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, oh, I don't know. But yeah, the idea is that, um, no, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about something else. Um, okay. In terms of um, in terms of what needs to be done to um, for the world to understand that um, that our human will is causal and not free, we the logic is done. Okay, I mean uh, this is this is episode number twenty five. There's twenty four episodes. Um, any well, ten of them would would tell you pretty much everything you need to know about why free will is impossible. Probably five. Um, so that, that's out there, and, but what's not, you know, what I haven't done yet completely, um, what needs a lot more work is to get us all to understand that it would actually really be a much more wonderful world, um, to the extent that we realize that free will is an illusion. Um, yeah, and, you know, I did, I did a sh an episode on this, um, the last episode was, was something about this, you know, the implications. But no, that, it was more about, like, implications without going into the, the kind of, like, 
our receiving them, you know, how, how this belief in our causal will would, would change our, our way of thinking about ourselves and our world and, and other people. So, so yeah, I think, I think it's time, and I, you know, I may start doing this a lot more in, in future shows, just, um, just basically focus on the emotional, psychological components. Fine, yeah, we can't take credit for, you know, the good we do, but, um, but that's probably a better thing. Fine, um, we can't blame others for the wrong they do because it just doesn't make any sense, but because of that, we can, um, our relationship with them is, is more intact and we can work on whatever needs to be worked on rather than the, uh, the um, attribution aspect. Um, just, I, I, I know for some people it's, it's like, you know, oh my God, everything is a movie, you know, everything is predetermined. I'm just like going along for the ride. Nothing really depends on, on me. I'm just like a robot, a puppet, an automaton. You know, I know that's, that's what people think. Um, and that's the challenge, but, but think about it this way. Think about it this way. Yeah, reality is a movie. Um, everything is predetermined. Reality is predetermined. It's causally predetermined. Um, that is amazing. Can you think of anything more? Well, uh, that is amazing. I was just thinking, yeah, a, a bliss, a blissed out world. That would be pretty amazing. But, um... But yeah, I mean, that's a completely different mindset, you know, to, to see the world in that perspective, it's like, it's like going into a new world. I mean, some people travel to other countries, other places just to kind of like get a different experience. You want a different experience for the rest of your life. Spend a few months kind of like understanding um, that free will is an illusion, that our wills are causal, and, and, and see how it, um, how it just, just changes your world to kind of like to, to see that everything's a movie. I mean, it's amazing. Um, what else? And again, you know, I have to like, I'm, I'm like, I'm the guinea pig in this. I'm the guinea pig because I promise you there is nobody on the planet that is um, attempting to integrate this, you know, into their, you know, everyday life. I mean, there's a, a woman, Sue Blackmore. She's a philosopher. She, um, I think, rightly um, corrected some of her fellow f philosophers who said, well, you know, you can understand that free will is an illusion, but you can't operate under a causal will perspective. Nonsense. Nonsense. She, she kind of like refuted them. She said, I do. And I'm telling you right now, I, I'm, I'm doing this in my life. I'm kind of like taking a causal will perspective to things that happen. And it is an amazing new world. It's, it's incredible. Um, because like it, um, it prevents judgment. Think about, th think about the idea of judgment. Um, we, we hold non-judgment to be um, a virtue, you know, um, to be non-judgmental, you know. Um, and, but under the free will perspective, you know, whether we're non-judgmental or not is really kind of like a matter of like goodness, you know. I'm going to be really good. I'm going to be non-judgmental, you know. But, to make it easier, <laughs> when, you, when you understand that judgment is irrational, I mean, at least when you're judging a person, you might want to judge reality, you know, the causal past, God, and say, well, it did something that it probably shouldn't, you know, pain, my God. But, but to judge another person, you, you would have a reason to not judge them, whether they're like your, your son or daughter, your... Um, your kid, your, your spouse, your brothers, sisters, friends, whomever, you know, it is such a blessing to have a reason not to hold people accountable, not to judge them. It is such a blessing to be able to be non-judgmental, not because like you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart, but because it's the only sensible way to be. It's the only logical way to be. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, I've got to figure out a way to get this more on Facebook. I do some kind of Facebook promotion. Um, oh, d 
dudes, whoever, okay. Um, log on to Facebook, okay, George Ortega, White Plains, New York. Friend me, okay, because maybe we can get this going. Maybe it's like, you know, get a lot of more friends. Right, right now, about 220 friends or so. Um, but they're mainly like my friends from high school and people that I really know. But see, the reason I'm, um, you might want to do this is because like what I've begun to do to kind of like make these shows better and to improve my understanding of, of the causal nature of reality and human will is that I've begun to talk about it a lot, to, to actually make videos for Facebook that I upload to my wall. And my wall actually incidentally is public, so you don't have to actually friend me to see all this stuff. But, you know, it'd be cool if you're friend of me. But anyway, that might be a cool thing, you know, to just like um, have, I mean, Facebook, what, what did it just do? It just like it's responsible for the, um, what do they call that, the Arab Spring, you know, the, the revolutions in, um, across the Middle East, people just, you know, using Facebook as a communication tool. I mean, it's the Internet in general also, but Facebook was a big part of it. If we could get Facebook behind this this movement to um, to transcend the delusion of free will, that would be awesome. And you want to know something? I mean, like, all right, I'm getting the ball started in this because again, you know, there's just nobody doing this. the The books on human will are, for the most part, written by people who believe in free will, so they're wrong to begin with. And there's a few by people like Saul Smilansky in Israel who actually wrote a book kind of like showing how free will is impossible but his take is like we sh we're probably better off believing we have free will. I think it's wrong. I think it's a misguided um, perspective but you know he's got a book. I haven't read it yet because these guys charge like forty fifty dollars for for their books and stuff and I'm not going like you know I already understand this stuff but um, yeah they're, they're actually I hope I hope the nature, the God, the, the fate compels me either to, to write an excellent book on this <clears throat> or to inspire um, someone. Because, all right, I started this show um, with the premise that, like, you know, I'm like some kind of prophet over here. And, and it's great that I don't believe in free will because I can, I can be, like, very humble. But, um, but this is the next biggest thing. This, this is the, the biggest thing. Um, and you know, there's more room for credit. In other words, like if you're an author, if you're sharp, if you're smart, if you, if, I mean, you've got to be really sharp in your logic on this, you know. You can't be like somebody who's gotten by through school just memorizing everything, just like, you know, just regurgitating what they teach you. You, you have to know how to think to, to write a book like this. But to anybody who's got that kind of ambition, you know, that book would be... New York Times bestseller easily. Um, it would do the job. I and mean, my this show, you know, fate willing, God willing, will inspire that. Either in me, I, I try to write a book. The reason I do these shows is because, like, for whatever reason, I don't know. I haven't explored it. I've tried to write books in the past. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. And I may succeed. Who knows? But you know, anybody who goes through these twenty-five chapter um, episodes of, of this show. And again, who's sharp and who, who wants to maybe do a little research into, let's say, neuroscience or just, you know, the philosophy of, of this. Um, doesn't take that. Six months research. I don't think you need any more than that, maybe less. Um, anybody who, can, who, who would, has sharp logic and has this basic understanding, who, who's watched these 25 episodes or like even 10 of them, five of them, can, if they, if they are, you know, good writers, if they've been fated to be able to do that well, write a book that um, that will reach a lot more people than this show, you know, and could be the um, the factor that that puts everything over the tipping point. You know, I'm thinking like the show we're doing in Manhattan. It'll actually, if all goes well, well, um, yeah, one show that we're planning for Manhattan. Um, might actually be the tipping point. It, it's, we've done a couple of specials in Manhattan. Um, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, the cable TV for, for Manhattan. Um, and, but yeah, if we're planning a, a call-in show on this, and if that happens, that actually might be the tipping point. That might, you know, because like Manhattan, there's so much like creative energy there, so much um, 
Yeah, potential. So that, but otherwise, yeah, if you guys like, if any of you like want to do something really, really great, you can't take credit, remember? <laughs> but if you want to do something really, really great, um, write this book. Um, or if you're like, let's say, you know, you're a PhD, let's say you've written magazine articles on the brain, on, on uh, physics, whatever, you know, to write articles on this. Um, all right, what else? Um, okay. Yeah, you know, it's, I'm thinking like, um, um, part of me, the part of me that's still conditioned to believe in free will is, is saying, well, you know, I kind of hope that it's me that, um, that gets to um, write that book and, you know, all that stuff. But but that's that's just like it's an insane kind of like um consideration really because you know whether it was me or anyone else it's it's not up to us anyhow we're just doing we're we're instruments of god <laughs> and uh all right i think this is a good episode i think this i, I want to do more of these but then i've got other topics that i've got to cover i've been taking it easy because it's kind of like summer i don't take vacations so i'm kind of like taking a bit of time off trying to just like loosen things up again. Um, I imagine that's going to change as we get into um, August and especially September. But, you know, I'm going to do more shows. And this is going great. I think people are finally getting it. Um, I was on a bus. I think I may have mentioned this before. I was on a bus and somebody saw my shirt. You know, I have a shirt that says Exploring Illusion Free Will. I asked him, well, when did you find out? You know, I asked him, do you believe in free will? He said, no, I, I, I understand. I said, when did you get this understanding? He said, about a month ago. This was about three weeks ago that this happened. It's very cool. <laughs> Things are happening. All right, I will see you next time on Exploring the free, uh, Illusion Free Will. Thanks, bye.